A powerful king desired for his son to rule over one of his kingdoms. The prince had to learn and grow in wisdom to sit on the throne. One day, the king met with the prince and shared his plan. They agreed the prince would go to a different town and gain experiences. He would face challenges as well as enjoy many good things there. The king then sent him to the town where the prince was expected to prove his faithfulness to the king and demonstrate that he was fit to receive the privileges and responsibilities the king had in store for him. The prince was given liberty to choose to receive these privileges and responsibilities or not, depending on his desires and his faithfulness. I am sure you want to know what happened to the prince. Did he return to inherit the kingdom? Dear brothers and sisters, each of us is a prince and princess. We have been sent to mortality by a loving heavenly father to enjoy the blessing of a body that would become immortal through the atonement and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are expected to prepare to return to God's presence by proving that we will do all things whatsoever the Lord our God shall command us. To help us, the Savior came to redeem us and show the path to return to God. God's children are invited to come to the Savior and be perfected in Him. In the scriptures, we find the invitation for us to come to the Lord repeated over 90 times. And more than half of these are personal invitations from the Lord Himself. Accepting the Savior's invitation means partaking of His ordinances and keeping our covenants with Him. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and invites us all to come unto Him and partake of His goodness, and He denied none that come unto Him. Our gospel learning and teaching deepen our conversion to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ and help us become more like them. Even though not all things have been revealed concerning the precise time and manner in which the blessings of ex exhortation will be bestowed, we are nonetheless assured of them. Alma, the high priest, teaching in the land of Zarahemla, recounted a profound invitation by Jesus Christ that, behold, he sended an invitation unto all men for the arms of mercy I extended towards them. And he said, Repent, and I will receive you. Yea, he said, Come unto me, and ye shall partake of the fruit of the tree of life. The Savior himself invites us to come unto him and take his yoke upon us, that we may have rest in this tumultuous world. We come unto Christ by exercising faith in him, repenting daily, making covenant with God as we receive the ordinances of salvation and exaltation, and enduring to the end by keeping those covenants. The path to perfection is the covenant path, and Jesus Christ is the center of all ordinances and covenants. King Benjamin taught that because of the covenant we, we make, we become sons and daughters of Christ, who are spiritually begotten us, and under his head are we made free. For there is no other name given whereby salvation cometh. We are saved as we endure to the end by following the example of the Son of the living God. Nephi counseled that all is not done by merely getting into the straight and narrow path. We must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men. The doctrine of Christ helps us find and stay on the covenant path, and the gospel is so arranged that the Lord's promised blessings are received through sacred ordinances and covenants. God's prophet 
President Rose Hem Nelson, admonished us in his January 16, 2018 telecast to, quote, keep on the covenant path. Your commitment to follow the Savior by making covenants with him and then keeping those covenants will open the door to every spiritual blessing and privilege available to men, women, and children everywhere. The end for which each of us strives to be endowed with power in a house of the Lord, sealed as families, faithful to covenants made in a temple that qualify us for the greatest gift of God, that of eternal life." Close quote. God will not abandon his relationship with or withhold his promised blessings of eternal life from every faithful covenant keeper. And as we honor sacred covenants, we are drawn closer to the Savior. Elder David Hay Bednar taught us yesterday that gospel covenants and ordinances operate in our lives like a compass to give us cardinal direction to come unto Christ and become more like him. The ordinances, covenant mark the path back to God. The ordinances of baptism and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, priesthood ordination, and the sacrament lead us to the Lord's temple to partake of his ordinances of exhortation. I would like to mention two things our Savior emphasized to help us faithfully keep covenants. One, the Holy Ghost can teach us, remind us of the Savior's teachings, and abide with us forever. He can be our constant companion to guide us on the path, on the covenant path. President Rosa Helm Nelson taught, quote, in coming days, it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost, close quote. Two, the Savior instituted the ordinance of the sacrament that we may always remember him and have a spirit to be with us. Baptism opens the gate to eternal life, and the sacrament helps us to steadfastly press forward along the covenant path. As we partake, as we take the sacrament, it shall be a testimony unto the Father that we do always remember his Son. And as we always remember him and keep his commandment, we shall have a spirit to be with us. Added to this promise, the Lord renews the promised remission of sin as we humbly repent of our sins. In staying faithful to our covenant, we should endeavor to always have the spirit to prepare us to worthily partake of the sacrament. And likewise, we regularly partake of the sacrament to always have the spirit with us. When our daughter was five years old, she had a battery-powered model car and loved to drive it around the house. One evening, she came to me and said, Daddy, my car no longer drives. Could we get some gas from your car to put in it so it can drive again? Perhaps it needs gas like your car to drive. I later observed that the battery power was down. So I said, we will get it to drive in about an hour. With so much excitement, she said, yes, we will take it to the gas station. I simply connected the battery to an electric source to charge. And after an hour, she was able to drive the car powered by the charged battery. She thereafter learned that it is important to always recharge the battery by connecting it to an electric source. As our daughter learned the relationship between the battery and power to drive our toy car, so we learn about Jesus Christ, the sacrament, and the spirit. We need the spirit to help us navigate through mortality as we faithfully keep covenant. 
and the sacrament to energize our spiritual being. Renewing our baptismal covenant and partaking of the sacrament drives faithfulness to all other covenants. A happy ending is assured as we prayerfully study and honor the Savior's invitation and enjoy his promised blessings. He said, and that thou mayest more fully keep thyself unspotted from the world. Thou shalt go to the house of prayer and offer up thy sacrament upon my holy day. I testify that covenant keepers are promised peace in this world and eternal life in the world to come. I bear witness that as you regularly partake of the Savior's emblem through the sacrament, you will have a spirit to guide you on the covenant path and stay faithful to your covenant in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>